What is up, down, and sideways, you fantastic individuals? We are back on League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you, beauties, for a little bit of global power rankings as we can really start to grade these squads because out west we're getting the best ofs now and most importantly getting the best of fives in the lpl oh starting to tighten up is the way things are looking in the global scene for league of legends happens every year you start to get in sync in all these regions the season's wrapped up playoffs are starting the best of series get underway and that's where things start to really change in these type of power rankings you really want to find whatever type of solid ground as much as you can before we get to the international world event that we're going to have to close things out let's dive into this list got some good movers and shakers this week just like we always bring a couple of new squads or returning squads and one squad just barely hanging on when you look at rng who had a very disappointing uh one and done playoff series against NIP that most people would have had them as big favorites in that matchup went totally opposite directions as a squad like EDG who they were so close to we'll get to EDG a bit later but then ahead of them evil geniuses we saw them for weeks and weeks on this list then they had a little mini slump but even with that mini slump a solid final week they only finished one game behind cloud nine and golden guardians and then it's kind of this weird situation of how it's been going on in North America, where I think you can look at and we'll talk about it with Cloud9 uh, is in Golden Guardians, is that they didn't really run away with that top position. Sure, they were still putting out good enough performances, but here or there, there was a whoopsie or a banana peel, and you bring yourself a little bit closer to even to that Evil Geniuses that was struggling a little bit through this later part of the summer split in the LCS, but after this past week, the way things rounded up, the way things they closed it out, you can have that confidence again in this Evil Genius team rising into that category with Golden Guardians, with Cloud9, as those top contenders from the LCS. And obviously, Shaden coming in and being the starting jungler. I know we, we were hyping up our Mayo non-stop the first few weeks, but this kid does look pretty good and kind of, whether or not you think our Mayo was the problem for this slump, Shaden definitely helped turn things around. Yeah, and I think that that's been an important change for this Evil Genius team. We talked so much about Armeo and Jojo Piano and what was going on there. And then eventually, it was, I don't know what part of it was, but it became out of sync. It was not that type of synergy that we were seeing. You know, some teams say, hey, we're sticking it out. We're grinding it out, making a change here and seeing it have that type of result. I've got faith in the Evil Geniuses that they've made the right move for the team and that this is the type of spark that you can continue to carry on with you in this later half of the split. It was not just season saving, it was an entire year worth of saving for both Team Heretics and Fnatic who bounced back in massive fashion, a pair of 2-0s to keep their splits alive. And uh, Fnatic was just barely holding on to this top 20, feel a little bit more comfortable with them. And Team Heretics looked like they did at times in the regular season again, better performances out of Evi, MVP level out of Vitao. That, that's the craziest thing <laughs> we're talking about the scales of what is mattering why we're seeing heretics fall, climb up to a position like this really is looking at that team and saying yes mvp level performances from Vateo, check mark we are getting yankos being that all-time jungler that he is for the region check mark flacken popping off being aggressive that's another check mark for this squad and the double check mark that you're not expecting is evi playing okay playing responsible in that playing okay side. that's the standard playing yeah decent but that's the thing because you're getting all those other check marks you're getting yeah. the flacked one you're getting the vateo mvp you're getting yankos one you didn't need all those check marks in the top lane as well from evie to even get to okay at the point now you can accept that's just got to be the baseline you got to hold on to because everything else is going to work out for this heretic squad Good to see them in this position. Fnatic as well, holding on, making that bounce back from when we were disappointed in them. Good to see for that. But really, for me, the hype it, right now is building for this Heretics roster. And continuing that Western bunch ahead of those two EU squads is the one who's going to be waiting for the winner, Excel. Even though they lost to G2, incredibly competitive series. I think 
even though they didn't win, overperformed what people were expecting. A super close game five, feeling confident about Excel going forward. What world are we in that we're talking about Excel at this point in time? And you would have told me this way back in this winter and spring splits. No way. No way with this type of performance. But we have seen it come together. We talked about this yesterday. I don't know if it's, you know, necessarily you can't compare apples to oranges with Abadage and Vitao with the performance that he's giving for Heretics. You know, it doesn't quite translate because obviously it wasn't working out off the rift, behind the scenes, whatever communications wasn't going through. So I want to give credit to this XL team that has ironed that out because that is always a problem that can linger and be a real downturn for a team. Good to see that from them. Good to see Odawamne playing at that leadership type of level for the team. And Patrick, of course, is the big clincher for me. Having him perform at that type of level that we hype him up all these times, all the way back when he just started in the LEC, back with upset and upset was outshining him. A little bit of a different story this year. Almost forgot. Sandwiched in between some of these EU squads, there's a tiny little organization you might have heard of that has yet another tumble down the standings. They're still in the top 20, but another week of this performance and T1 is not going to be on this list much longer. Uh, your weekly T1 freefall check-in. And yes, it's starting to get into that territory where they're going to be outside of this top 20 list. It's one of these ones, again, you continue through, you know you have less expectations. It's, you know, you know all these type of things with Poby in that lineup and understanding it. What you don't understand is the underperformance from the other four members of this team. And yes, there's varying degrees about the ways that they have been actually able to perform. And I think the one member that get, escapes a lot of this is Gumiushi down in the bottom lane. I think individually has been doing a lot, but everybody else you have seen either something that just hasn't stacked up to what you have built, the, built up these players to be given the results that have been secured by them and the organization during these past two years. And it's these individual head-to-head -head matchups that, okay, if owner is getting beat up by Canyon, you, you say, yep, that's forgivable, but umpty? Like, bottom tier junglers in the LCK are getting the better head-to-head. -head. It's It continues to be a head-scratcher. Uh, what is going on with this squad? And I know the expectations aren't as high without Faker, but the expectations are still a lot higher than what we're getting. Right. It's not like, oh, you're just going to coast through, losing all the way through. No problems. We'll see you later. This is still a T1 roster and still a landscape of the LCK where you're looking at that those four plus Poby and you're saying you have to get it done at the very least against some of these lower level squads, which is where they're dropping. And not just dropping, but they're dropping 0-2. Is that situation absolutely a free fall? For this T1 lineup right now, we need some way of stabilization and holding it on. Who's going to step up and do it? Normally, you have a couple LCS squads, Cloud9 Golden Guardians, ahead of T1. You'd be saying, LCS, here we go. But they're good. I'm feeling good about both these squads, but it's it's not like they're you know ascending into the top five or anything. <laughs> no, it's, it's a different type of territory. I would have thought we... We would have used all of our supply of Hopium Copium to have these squads ahead of T1. Different situation, seeing the way things have played out right now. And it is good for Cloud9 and the Golden Guardians holding on to their spot. Mentioned it with Evil Geniuses. Haven't been flawless, haven't been those ones pushing out and, you know, kind of making it even more difficult to have them higher up on this list type of thing. Feeling very steady where we've been holding on to these squads in this type of list. What we have seen from these teams, the power levels, where they're matching up, and what is going to be possible for both of them with the way the meta is shaping up towards these playoffs. Feeling good about these Cloud9 and Golden Guardians teams. Honma Life also getting a bump. Latest team to kick T1 down. Got the head-to-head -head win against them as we are fully immersed in the G-Riz era. And I'm loving every minute of it. Man, well, I mean, certainly you would be loving it if you had to live through any of the clit era with Hanwha Life Esports. So you got to go definitely... through the darkness to get to the light, you know? Absolutely. And now you're sitting on the beach enjoying the great sun down in Busan. It's a good time for the Hanwha Life crew. Yes, they're starting to get it together. I think 
you know, again, we're always checking in with the other two, Zeka and Kingan, as the two big parts, I think, for me, for Hanwha Life, that are, if they're operating, they're going, this Hanwha Life team can shoot themselves even further into the stratosphere for this LCK scene. Without that, they're kind of just hovering around. Yes, Grizzly's been good. Yes, Viper has been there for the team. It is really as well. Can you get that extra help? Can you get that extra muscle in these team fights from your team, mem team, team members? Then, last squad on this list is EDG. Talked about them versus RNG. They were at similar levels heading into playoffs. RNG one and done. EDG goes on a pretty impressive one. Win back-to-back -back series dubs. Game five against OMG. And then a competitive, oh-so-close five-game set uh, against TES. That They got close, but there's enough positive signs that I feel good about EDG in that gauntlet. EDG showed enough to you that you th that you can believe that yes, right out of the gates they're going to be a tough out in that gauntlet uh, run. That's what you're looking for in the LPL. What we've seen from this team, looking at Ale in that top side, being disruptive, being a true leader for the squad, still with Uzi on this lineup, and they're trying to figure things out as far as you know uh, resources, everything else, and that changes and fluctuates game to game for this team when you're operating on that type of level, but it is one of those things wanted to check in. Good with Ale, good on Uzi. I think that is the part that is still, you know, a couple whoopsies here or there, you know, walking into turrets, you know, whatever type of stuff that happens. But I, overall, we are seeing that type of level, that type of trust from his teammates develop and build up that I think you can see that, you know, it's still a possibility that this EDG squad can make that run. Holding down top 10 on this list the squad that i think is now basically at the exact same very similar power level to edg is omg who get brought down to their level even though they lost that series i think those two squads it was a competitive five game set they're very much at a similar power level and then as you look ahead of them it is d plus who get dropped down a spot i mean they beat the bros it took three games but it was a dominant game three but it's more the two squads ahead of them specifically weibo and g2 that you're feeling real good about no concerns really for d plus you feel good about d plus sure and, and again holding steady in this type of position but you didn't see anything this week and then especially referenced in comparison to everything else you saw this week from everybody ahead that is gonna make you jump out of your seat and say, what, what's going on here? D plus has gotta be higher. It ain't that type of situation. Holding on strong steady, as you said, that third game against the bros was dominant. And yes, the bros have been better as of late and good enough to be one of these kind of teams pushing up on that playoff limit, pushing on that edge in the LCK. Still one of those ones where you'd like a squad like D plus with the hopes and aspirations and talent ceiling that you think is there to do a little bit better than they did this week. They did what T1 could, and that was taken down. Okay, Savings Bank, Breon. So they're sitting there at number nine. G2 gets bumped up a spot. I know there was some borderline moments in that XL series, but you take the good and the bad with G2. They are just the full embodiment of what Caps is, and seeing the uh, unique pick band that we've seen out of them seeing some of the dominant performances and the capabilities of this team to come back from almost any size deficit is enough to feel real good about them and be terrified to match up against them in finals i love you know looking at this g2 lineup and all i can see is one of these mega home run sluggers in baseball type of thing because you're thinking about it they're hitting home runs right that is the excellency that you do see from them you're gonna see some ugly strikeouts. And in this best of situation series, we got that full display. You saw it all from these guys, the strikeouts, the walks, the home runs coming through. And that the home runs are the big reason why you're staying and pushing yourself into this territory as G2. And I tell you what, that home run goes by the name of Cog Ma down in that bottom lane for Ohan Sama. Slap it on in a little bit different, but slap it into that aggressive ADC category where you can play on that borderline and push for that dominance. That came through big time in this series for G2 with Han Sam. Another dominant playoff performance, and if you back that up with a solid international performance, we got to start throwing Han Sama in there in terms of goats when it comes to Western AD carries because he has been along for, around for a long time playing at an incredibly high level. Right ahead of G2, Wei Bo 
gaming. They climb up a couple of spots. They have a solid first series to kick things off. Okay, we avoid absolute disaster. And then the very competitive back and forth series against LNG. They absolutely had avenues to be matching up and winning that series. Do you feel confident in them going into the gauntlet? I don't think you should ever feel confident in Weibo, but we still see the signs. I think you should feel good that there's at the very least gonna be some time here between the LPL playoffs and that gauntlet. Get a little bit of that reset. There is that asterisk that you worry about with Weibo gaming cooling off too much, because that is absolutely something that we do see with this lineup, with a player that is so volatile like the Shy in that top side. Still feeling like there is some good stuff here going on for this Weibo gaming squad. They showed us enough tenacity, enough strength in these playoffs so far, even in losing that tough matchup got the faith that this is going to be a Weibo gaming that is going to show up and bring their very best out in the comp. Last on this list, LNG, who got the head-to-head -head win against Weibo. Even though they got bumped out of the top five this week, it's barely, and you know what? We're extending the VIP lounge. LNG, they can hang out in the nice patio out front. They get drinks, they get food. They're not inside, but they're still part of the lounge, you know? Yeah, I mean, they, they don't get a special, you know, bracelet or anything like that, but ah, they're cool. They can slide on in, my man. That is exactly how we're feeling about this LNG squad. What a series they had in these LPL playoffs to make sure that they are advancing. Uh, and what a player they have managed to secure themselves in scout and the role that he has played for this team. I think a lot of people didn't have maybe the ultra high expectations as he was leaving EDG thinking, okay, you know, you're still a very serviceable player for a team that's looking to be competitive, but you're not going to get that high octane push to the ultimate level. My oh, man, you seen those Azir games? I think we are getting that ultimate level scout appearing in these playoffs for LNG. Good timing. The problem for scout and LNG is, well, the other three teams in the LPL because they are absolutely insane. Top Esports takes that number five spot back from LNG, even though they lose to BLG in that head-to-head. -head. Four games doesn't do this series justice. I know they got completely smashed in that first game, but what an incredible game four we had. 40 minutes plus back and forth. Pentakills, insane team fighting out of Rookie and Jackie Love. TES, despite going down, the biggest test BLG has had from any team not named BLG all or not named JDG, excuse me, all year. It's been so insane how good JDG and BLG have been. This BLG team that one has been you know, only bested by a JDG. We almost saw it with Top Esports so close. And yes, that game four that you said, that one is pretty much to me. Distill that one down, ring it out. That is the essence of the LPL. What was going on in that matchup? Fun times, good series. Yes, unfortunate though for Top Esports as they get ousted in that one still gonna have that opportunity in the gauntlet for them to make this long run for worlds you're looking at this team and how good they have been and better than everybody else on this type of list and even possibly better than the other two but it is so hard to make this case at this point in the lpl to climb up even more and make it you know a top three of just lpl when you have two front runners that are so strong in jdg and blg BLG dropping the hammer on top esports. And when you got two LCK squads playing at a level like KT and Gen G, and we said we got the marquee head to head matchup. If KT can show up against Gen G, that's their ticket to send themselves into that top three. Not only did they show up to a high level, Gen G didn't really fully show up at their power level, but a 2 0 and honestly, not a close. 2-0 in the form of KT. Gen G bounces back in their next series, and KT bounces back with another 2-0. But holy moly, this team, this is the only LCK squad you can talk about team fighting wise in the same category as the top two in the LPL. Oh man, catching catching the train to make it into this top five this week. Gen G, they're kind of a little bit behind. You know, they're waiting to get a coffee. That oh, will be fun. We'll make it to the platform in time. They get and KT's already in their seats. They're all ready to go. They're taking the roaster coaster. They don't even take the train. They're beside the train full speed. 
Hell yes, brother. KT Rolster. Boy, do they ever get it done in this head-to-head -head matchup against uh, Gen G that we were wanting to see, as you mentioned. Gen G, maybe a little bit flat, not all the way flat. Maybe you've left your, you know, soda sitting out for a couple of minutes type of flat is the way that it felt in this series. But the power that came through from this uh, KT Rolster squad is that power that we've been keeping track of and it is growing and growing my man i'm feeling good but what we are seeing from this team again all parts that bdd action cuz cuz what cuz has been doing in the jungle man we got to talk about that one the way that it has been going this whole year he has been a mega difference maker for the squad keen being that top lane stud that we know that he has carved out his name and legacy in the lck and again the one thing that i always leave to keep track of with kt is Lahens and aiming down in that bottom lane. If they're feeling good, they're smiling, they got that mojo, things are gonna be popping off for KT Rolster and they're popping off into the top three. In a world with Canyon, Owner, Peanut in the jungle, we might be looking at Cuz getting first team all pro honors this year. Imagine that sentence. And it might be a unanimous type of one. <laughs> the way that he is playing, the way that everyone else looks, crazy world but we are just living in it my man hold on tight hold on tight don't even hold on tight put your hands in the air and enjoy the kt rollster coast and thankfully we stay grounded in this crazy world with the top two in the lpl that are mr consistent for both of them and blg the series win against tes it still feels a bit unfair to put them ahead of jdg who were still waiting to even make their playoff debut when they match up against lng it gets a little wonky here at the top here with these two and of course having that understanding that you can't really unseat jdg without seeing that first first series from them if we're in a world you know next couple of weeks we're crazy knock on wood if jdg just absolutely crashes out of these lpl playoffs you know sweep 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 type of situation yes then that door opens up but right now door is still closed for this blg team even with an incredible performance against top esports challenged pushed tested but standing through tall in that test and coming out strong on the other side with a nice pentakill medal on the neck added to uh, elk how many this year add another one on my boys yeah, it's gonna say if he's getting a medal every time neck's gonna be a little heavy this guy's racked up so many pentakills but uh yeah it's you know much like seeing cuz style on a lot of the lck junglers it's wild to see this Boom from Jun, who's a guy who we were talking about feeding the shy and rookie, kind of griefing them a couple of years ago on IG to now what he's doing on the Nidalee is, you know, not safe for work on the screen. And it's got to be said, it's not, you know, oh, he's just got the teammates. Oh, it's just because he's playing with Giga Bin in the top side. No, no, Jun has been doing it for himself and getting it going for the squad being that spark being that catalyst that gets the other guys going and on their path to dominating in that series. Yes, big props to him and what he has done. Always love to see stories like that about making this uh, the journey, making that reverse turnaround here and saying, hey, you, you passed up over me? Take another look, my guys. Yeah, but still, apart from a pair of 0-3 sweeps, JDG and BLG both looking pretty solid in that top two as we even get closer to the world championship. But that is it today for League Unlocked. Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people. As always, thank you for watching, and we will catch you on that flippity flip.